Hello there. Uh, bar pass coming at you again. Decided to do a small one tonight. This is a five by seven. The spring flowers are so beautiful this year. Let me show you what I'm going to do. Uh, I've got one tulip in there and these look a lot like daffodils but they're smaller and they don't have that center that comes out. They're just real delicate. I put a lot of bulbs in last year so I'm not completely sure what they are but I just really love them and I went out and cut some. I thought you know the addition of the tulip was nice too and got them in my little green ball jar which I love so much. Spin you back around here. This is a little loose tonight. I hope that doesn't drive you crazy. Um, before we start, I was going to talk to you about a new DVD that I bought. Painting from photographs. Shelby Keefe. Um, it, it's long. It's like 5 hours and 45 minutes. Two DVDs. I haven't gotten through the second one yet. I started watching it last night. So far, I, I really like it. Um, she has a lot of plein air experience, which helps a lot if you're going to work from photographs. You know, um, you understand more what you're seeing, in my opinion, <clears throat> when you look at a photograph. Um, but she shows you in, in the beginning of it um, uh, photos that she used and her paintings to show how much more interesting her paintings were than the photographs. Um, you know, She's the artist. She made changes. A lot of times it was color changes to make things more interesting. Um, she's really good at foliage and like blooming trees. She would mass those together. Um, but uh, it's good. Uh, she's painting from, this is only a piece of the image. The focal point is the little chairs, which I think are really charming. But she mixes color, she mixes greens for you. You get to see her mix greens. But I like her style. She's painterly and uh, one thing she does do is she tones her canvases, which I like to do. Um, she uses acrylic to do it and there are advantages to that. And I do have a lot of acrylics and I could do that. The advantage is they're, they're dry when you go to work on top of them. I mean, you'd have to let them dry because you can do oil over acrylic. You just cannot do acrylic over oil. And when you tone like I do with oils, even though it's very thin, you know, you are working into a wet surface a little bit. So that's, that's a disadvantage. But that's one thing she does. Um, she tones pretty bright. And she does, spends a long time on her sketch, which, you know, makes me think I should spend more time on my sketches. So let's start out and tone my canvas. I usually just mix up an orange. I like that. I like that warm color underneath. Because I got a feeling this is going to flop around. I, I do packing tape as you can see and I roll it and uh, usually that works pretty good. It's probably gotten kind of loose. I, I use it too long probably. Tomorrow's Easter. A little bit sad this year. I have a big family and uh, Easter is just one of my favorite holidays. We usually go to my daughter's and uh, it's just a fun day, especially if the weather's good. You know, the kids hunting eggs and we take big group photo and uh, going to miss it. But You know, the main thing is, is for us all to get through this, right? I've got three grandsons and uh, two of them will be 16 this year, which is, you know, a milestone. One of them is, uh, was hoping to get his license. He turns the beginning of May, he'll be 16. And that isn't happening right now. And uh, they wanted to have a party. And of course, none of that's happening. It's just kind of sad. All right, dropping things. All right, we're going to take a smaller brush and sketch this on. I'm using my view catcher. And um, 
This doesn't have a 5x7 on here, so I'm just going to set it to what it looks to be approximately a 5x7 for me. I'm going to throw a little blue into my orange mixture, a little crimson, just getting something darker. All right, let's take a look here. Now I'd like to put it not directly dead center, kind of push it off one way or the other. I think what we'll do is we'll keep the tulip closer over here. So it's kind of thing where things land. Kind of looking at negative space. Obviously not going to be very big. I'm sorry about this panel. I must be time for some new tape. We'll just kind of place things where they are. Put some leaves in here too. It's just, I mean, the trees and the flowers have been beautiful this year. <coughs> I don't know if they have been where you are. Red buds are out and I was walking thinking just how beautiful all that is. I mean, nature has no idea all this stuff's going on to it. Doesn't care. Put a little, these are water mixable oils to make them move around. I put a little water in them. interesting kind of shadow going here. It's like the light's going through and it's really bright right here and then, I don't know, it's cool looking. All right, that's enough information to get going. Brushes are Rosemary and Company. My paints are water mixable oils. That was the only adjustment I made when I went to them. I did, mi I did miss solvent a little bit. You know how you dip into your solvent and thin things down. I did, I did miss that. I hope you enjoyed my series. I just finished the, I think, end up being, I think, five videos. Probably won't do that too often, you know. I don't have the patience to paint big too often, and, uh, but I'm pretty happy with the painting. Get a knife and uh, 
try to come up with something for the tulip. mix in a really true purple you want to use a, a cool blue and a cool red you don't just want to really throw any blue and any red together your cool blue would be ultramarine and the cool red is the lizard and crimson that's the purest purple you can get We're going to start with the darkest side of that tulip. And these are, uh, again, they're Rosemary and Company, and these are the Evergreen. They're a soft brush. But I do have um, the Rosemary and Company Ivory Series, which are much stiffer, more like a bristle. I use those for a long time. So if you like scooping up paint and working you know, getting heavier paint on the canvas, you probably would like the ivory better. There's one little area there where I'm seeing through the petal on the right side and it's much warmer. on Facebook you should find Eric Rhodes he produces plein, uh, plein air magazine and every day he comes on like at noon every day he's been giving some things away and uh, I think every day at three o'clock he they've been having little demos and that that's actually why I ordered this DVD they show you a piece of a DVD and then they offer you a discount on the DVD switch to the yellow flowers. The center is a little darker and warmer. So I may go ahead and kind of throw the centers in first where we see them. I 
I just never run out of things I want to paint. I don't know. I know I have people tell me that. They just don't know what to paint. Especially now with the flowers being out. I just love them. And we'll get these blocked in, um, but then when we put the background in, we'll probably have to clean up the shape of them again. They're almost white, but not quite. Yeah, like I said, they're like a little miniature daffodil, but they don't have that center that juts out like uh, daffodils. I don't know if you ever tried daffodils, but they can be challenging to paint, I think. I think the hardest flower to paint is a rose. You know, and I try not to overthink flowers, but maybe that's where I get into trouble with those roses, and maybe that's what I am doing. Kind of massing in the the whole little shape. If you like to paint flowers, you don't want to paint every little petal on every flower. Try to avoid doing that. Try to mass them in as one whole shape, and then explain a few. I've said that before. They're they're boring, and they are kind of. They don't look natural and uh, fresh when you do that. They look kind of uh, like an illustration. Unless you're a realist and you want you know everything to look like a photograph. That's not me. I think I'm going to set this brush aside with the yellow so we can not pollute it with anything else because I'll be coming back to it, I'm sure. All right, let's mix up something for the jar. And this is one of those green ball jars, which I love. And this is a case where I do get some phthalo out, even though I don't normally have it on my canvas. I mean, my palette. It's just a beautiful, rich color. And that's one thing this Shelby does. She doesn't necessarily paint the colors she sees. She makes it interesting, like... Um, she was showing one building she did, which was kind of a gray, white color. And uh, she made it a warmer, more yellow kind of color. And it was better. I mean, again, you can get away with that. I mean, you couldn't if it was a commission you were doing, obviously. put in the darker parts of this jar first. Let's try that. Okay, I'm trying to look where things are.
I keep my finger on that so it doesn't bounce all around. <laughs> Time to break down and put some new packing tape on it, right? You know, just try to paint what you see there. Easy said, right? <laughs> Again, that's the challenge of painting from life. Very light over in there, maybe lighter than that even. Actually, there's more stems in here than I'm showing. Part of this dark is because we can see through it and the background is dark. tulips that I put in the last painting they're still out there in a vase I've really enjoyed them but they God, they've opened up and opened up they're just enormous ginormous I want to run that off Mostly using the same brush. 
And we're probably going to get some palette knife into here too. to be painting small after that large one. I think what I find that takes the most patience for me is painting in the background of the objects on the large painting. I don't mind painting the large objects, but uh, I lose patience painting the background probably. If I get this angle, knife at the right angle, it just blinds me from the ceiling light. You know, we could do one day is set up a still life outside uh, on the table later this summer. I have a friend that does a lot of that. Kind of plein air, you know. Not near the challenges of a lot of things, but still you can get some pretty light effects. I think what we'll do is we'll go ahead and uh, paint the background in. I'm going to put a little bit of this purple on that lip, just like a reflected uh, color, something I enjoy doing. All right, let's mix up um, transparent red oxide and ultramarine blue. And then we're going to put a little bit of white in that. The, the um, vase is setting so far forward that we don't have a, you know, a shadow on the background. what I did. <laughs> oh, that's that's my painting life. I just I am so bad about that kind of stuff. Lay it down in there and just stick it in a puddle of paint. Sometimes I don't even start painting and I've got paint on me. It's like how did I do this? <laughs> it's one nice thing about the water mixable oils. If you get to them, you know, They'll wash out. They'll wash out of your clothes and <laughs> jeez. Uh, okay. Anyway, I, that same puddle, I'm putting a little um, yellow in and a little more white. Do 
trying to warm it up and lighten it up on this side. Now I'll try to lay that knife down without shoving it back in a puddle of paint. All right, now we've got the orange on there and I'd like to leave some of it showing, so we'll, we'll try to do that. tip or just touch my brush into the water a little bit, get this to move a little bit better. We're going to come back and explain these leaves again and stuff. Let's go ahead and uh, put some of this dark in some of these holes. I paint with a couple groups and obviously we're not meeting right now. Um, the one group is some of them are going to get together Tuesday in one of the gal's yards. I'm not. I'm not ready to go out. I've been so good about staying in. I just think it's too soon. Our governor, you know, has us in till the beginning of May. And even though we'd be outside and, you know, we'd stay away from each other, I just... Uh, I'm not going to. I'm just not comfortable with it yet. show this to you, but there's a, that kind of shape of a, a shadow, and then inside of it, it's very light and very warm. That's probably too cool. You know, and I don't know if it'll rewrite, but for now we're just try not to overthink it. At this point, we'll just paint it in and see what we like.
I guess would be prettier if it was a little more translucent. Trying to think how I feel about that. Let me turn you around and show you. That's what I'm seeing. See the shadow on the table? And it's got that area in the center where the light's coming through the jar. Oop. You know, I see that. Does it make sense? It's not near as light as what I see. to stop and think what day it is now, huh? If you're like me, <laughs> they all kind of run together now. Whew. Blinding again. I like that now that I've got that in because it's actually in the back of the jar that little bit of light I don't think it ought to be that
There's a palette knife painter I've mentioned before, Michelle Byrne, some another artist I watch, so many good artists, but uh, she was saying that years ago. She, uh, you know, she wasn't selling that great and uh, wasn't sure where she wanted to go with her work, and she took a workshop with C.W. Monday, who, great artist, and uh, his recommendation to her was to get more paint on the canvas. So, but so, uh, I guess that transitioned into paint with palette knife and uh, changed her career. She sells much better, and I guess people, you know, they like to see paint. one tool up. We might put a little bit of this color over here too. Suggest some other kind of little flower. Maybe a little bit in here too. Looking to see what I like and what I don't like. I actually don't, don't love that, actually. So we're going to just kind of make it a, a shadow or a reflection. Yeah. One thing you can do too if you're painting uh, mm -hmm. an object like this, like a jar or a vase, is especially useful for a vase. Is to turn it upside down. And check and see if it's symmetrical when it's upside down. That's really helpful. That's not bad. I feel like this dark is too evenly divided. We'll pull some light over here and some dark over here. flipping back around. Again, it's not too bad. It really is helpful though.
See, we kept the jar off to one side and then the shadows over to this side. And All right, what do we think? Let's see. Anything too tight? Does anything need to come out further? You know, and there's no uh, petals on the table, but that might have been sweet to do. You know, so just a couple petals down here. I'm not going to do it because I don't have them. But if you, because you got to shadow them and everything. I like the information to be there if I'm going to do it. feeling like I have um, maybe too much green in the center. I'm looking at that. Let me tell you what we're going to do. We're going to give this painting away. So um, what I'm asking is that you like and subscribe and leave me a comment. I'm trying to get my subscriber list up. So we're going to wait about a month. I'm going to promote it, you know, Facebook and Instagram and, and uh, try to get more people over here. we wait about a month it be I can should be dry by then and I can spray it and ship it so like and subscribe because I want to give it to one of my subscribers and leave me a comment unless you just don't want it I get a lot of people watching, but not. I don't have near as many subscribers as I would like. Um, I don't know. People don't have a YouTube channel, or they just, you know, they want to remain anonymous. I don't know. I think I might get one of my little skinny, skinny new brushes and sign this. That's probably what they're good for, right? My itty bitty brushes. But this is a five by seven, and uh, it'll be easy to frame. So again, like, subscribe, leave me a comment of some kind, and uh, like I said, I'm going to be off promoting it, but we'll draw a name in about a month, and uh, so let me show it to you. Give you a straight on view of it. I 
had some pretty nice heavy paint on it. Pretty colors. Show you the setup again. I know it's always a little difficult to see because of the glare. So there it is. Like, subscribe, and give me a comment if you would. And like I said, we'll, we'll draw a name in about a month and give it away. All right. Thank you for joining me. You have a nice night.